before we start, just so I have names correct, so it's Rob Schiffman. You got it. And Deb. Rabbi. 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 Like, was Rabbi. Like, was like... <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to Talkin' with Taylor. I'm here today with Rob Schiffman and Deb Rabai yes. of the next Starlight Indoors production of Broadway's next hit musical, which is this really wonderful improv comedy and I'm very excited to learn more about it. So, so a completely improvised musical. So tell me how this works. Oh yes. Yeah. So this is Broadway's next hit musical, just like you said. And um, have you heard of the Tony Awards? Oh yes. So this is the phony awards, yeah. <laughs> okay? So the audience comes in, they write down a made up song title, throw it in a fishbowl, we have a host come out who's like a Neil Patrick Harris type, you know, works with the crowd and everything. And then each of the improvisers comes out and presents their nominated song that Pulls is one pulled of from yeah. the bowl, okay. exactly. Okay. We do four of those completely improvised scenes and songs. The audience votes on which one they like the best. Then we go away for five minutes, come back and present that entire improvised musical, including the winning song that we just made up moments ago. Oh, I love it. So it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like whose line is it anyway, but but exploded into this wonderful Broadway exactly. extravaganza. You got it. Expanded out into a full musical. I love it. I mean, that's incredible to me that you you do a whole musical. I mean, I, I you know I barely can talk just normally. <laughs> you do okay right now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so how did you all get involved in this? Uh, you know, I think we all came back at it from different backgrounds. Um, the, uh, I, you know, I studied improvisation in high school and college and music as well. Did an improv show in New York for a long time called Chicago City Limits mm -hmm. and eventually made my way to this group and uh, then we started taking this show, uh, we changed it quite a bit and put it on the road and uh, really started touring in earnest in about 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how the group got together. That's exciting. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure it's, it's you, when you're doing this with partners, you have to really be a tight-knit group, I'm assuming. Right? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. tour We to 30 to 40 cities a year together. We perform in New York as well. And you know, Deb and I, for example, have been working together on one level or another since 2000. One, so we. Know I mean, we spend more time with each other as a group than most of us spend with our families <laughs> yeah, and best it's friends really true. and spouses and boyfriends and this girlfriends. This is your family. It, it really is, family. <laughs> and it comes yes. with all the the trimmings and the trappings of family. <laughs> we drive each other crazy, but we care about one another. We know each other very well. Yes. We trust each other, which is a big deal because on stage. You know, the, uh, the main tenet of improvisation is acceptance. Mm -hmm. So if somebody puts out an idea, you got to jump on it and take it. And that requires um, trust and faith. And, you know, the good thing about having worked together so long is that we can also do a little bit of mind reading. You know, I know where Deb's going to go a lot of the time. She knows where I'm going to go, and we can and just can follow each other. Each other's and we can actually set each other up for success. Right. Right. right? So I know the stuff that Rob does well. So. If I'm in a situation where I'm creating something, I can create a situation where I know he's going to be able to like knock it out of the park because it's right. the thing he does, <laughs> right. rather than someone setting you up to like, I challenge you, and this right. is something you're going to be terrible right. at. Now fall. Now. Right, exactly. Now go 15 push-ups. Go. Right. Have at it. We would yeah. never do that to each other. A little fun uh, tidbit for the audience is we have an actor in the group. His name is Robert C. Grant. Yes. And anytime Robert gets to play an animal, it is a <laughs> gift for Robert and a and, gift for the audience. And some of the best he's played have been a llama. Yeah. Okay. And a hawk. Yes, a walrus. Yeah. And most recently, a merman. It's it's tr so great because brand. he has a he has the background of a dancer, and he to does. see him do these things is so. If you're coming to the show. Watch for Robert. See if you can <laughs> suggest, uh, put an animal in your song yes, title. Yes, and hopefully he'll grab it. <laughs> there you go. There's, that's a perfect tip. <laughs> so, so let's talk about the audience for a minute. So while you all are kind of a wonderful family on stage, it, it really sounds like you you make the audience part of your family for that yeah. night. So you really you bring everyone and involve them in the show. So talk a little bit about how you get everybody involved. So as I had mentioned uh, before, one of the first ways that we connect with our audience in terms of the creation of the show is when they come to the theater, they're gonna write down a made up song title on a slip of paper and throw it in the fishbowl. And then also beyond that, um, we have a host, sort of like a Neil Patrick Harris, like I was telling you. And our host does a lot of work learning the area, learning wherever, whatever city or town we go to, kind of learning what makes that town tick, and then essentially kind of poking fun at it so that the audience really feels 
this that this is a, a custom-made show. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. Great. And the other thing is, our ethic is to make not only make each other look good, but we're not one of those comedy shows that's looking to like smash our audience or make them, you know, feel bad or put them down. Mm. We're very inclusive. We want that's people so to have a good time when they come mm -hmm. to our show and feel like it's something they could bring anyone to. Yeah, so. That's great. And you feel like you could bring anybody to yeah, the show. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Anybody of any age. Yes. Yeah, it's family friendly. You can bring my, I have a, a four-year-old and seven-year-old daughter at home and they love coming to the that's show. That's so great. Yeah. It's just this one big party for everybody. Yeah. Oh, you know, like when you watch uh, like a, a a Disney movie or something, how there's the parts that are for the kids, but then there's the like little intellectual parts <laughs> that the adults get to, and they're like, "Oh, I'm glad I came." That's kind of us. Right. I love it. I yeah. love it. So, so you mentioned how you kind of fine tune it to the city mm -hmm. that you're in. So, have you ever been to Kansas City? We've been near Can. We we were in St. Joseph, Missouri. Mm -hmm. We were in Overland oh, oh, oh. Park. Yes. Mm -hmm. Overland Park. Uh, we're, yeah, we, and we're coming Sedalia. to Sedalia. Oh, yes. Sedalia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we've never there. performed. Is that right? Yeah. We've oh. never performed right in KC, but we've been in and around. That's yeah. great. Well, it's a wonderful city to 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 enjoy For and to make fun of. Oh, so. yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to hear what you say. Yes, me so, too. So talking about the audience again. So do you have any favorite memories? Any favorite bloopers or anything that uh -huh. happens? It's such an such a fly by the seat of your oh, pants yeah. show. I assume. I always love the moments you know, that we surprise ourselves. Yes. I love the moments where we're laughing just as, yeah. you know, we're, we're just joyfully laughing. Um, I remember we were in Massachusetts one time and we got the song title, uh, The Electric Fire Breathing Unicorn Experience. <laughs> Good right. luck making up a song with right. that, right? <laughs> and we were all kind of like, huh? But it ended up being great. We did a musical about a, a, a college uh, hazing ritual <laughs> called the electric fire breathing unicorn experience and it was a super fun story so I think for me any time where we're you know flying on the seat of our pants just like they are you know or, or when something happens on stage we, we were rehearsing the other night right before a show for example and we were doing was it in rehearsal I'm not sure what you're gonna say it, I can't remember if it was rehearsal or a show we were doing a oh no no it was in a show we this were given the, the song we were given the song title um, the time we did that thing. Oh yeah, this was just two days ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we were in Fort Lauderdale uh, at the Broward Center and we were given that song title and the guy who took it said it was from a musical about a group of friends who summer together. They go away on a trip together every summer and one summer something horrible happened and they chose to never speak about it again. <laughs> And so, but they're all scarred from it in different ways. Right. Oh, yes. So the scene started. It was incredibly somber. Everybody was, you know, talking about all these random things, like the scarring on this person's body and everything. <laughs> We're no, having no idea what it was from, and uh, just really dark stuff. And then the song started, and it was really dark. And then our music director, out of the blue, took it in the chorus. To this, like, and we went there silly. too, and we were. Dying. I mean, we were all so surprised. Yes. So those are the bloopers of the funny moments when we have no idea that it's going to happen. Yeah. So great. So, yeah. and you mentioned kind of your musical director and what. It sounds like they hold a lot of power. Absolutely. And that as they kind of dictate what. Well, what, it's, what, not, it's not, not dictate. dictate. Yeah. It's it's really like that moment dance. might have been dictate. That one was dictate <laughs> because it all went silent and then it was ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, <laughs> hey. But it's really like a dance, oh, you know, okay. between our our musical improviser and the singer. Right. You know, we make a move musically. We we go for a note. We go for a feel and they meet us right where we are and then we gently just like if you were dancing with somebody you know someone is leading but you have to have a follower and then the follower can lead a little so we have that shared um, idea of, right. of what a song can be and then we allow it to unfold and we allow the patterns to develop yeah. and we work well together again we, right. we do rehearse which sounds weird for improv <laughs> but it's not like we rehearse the plots or anything we rehearse the, the tools necessary sure. to do Absolutely. it yeah so, they yeah. you know they play a chord progression we sing a melody because of it which affects their chord progression sure. which affects our melody back and forth it's like training for yeah. yeah well sports is a great <laughs> That's metaphor a really good metaphor and in terms of how you compare that to what happened the other night with this piano like, you know, in basketball, right, you're passing the ball back and forth and whoever it should be that have it, to have it in the moment is who gets it who to, so that the team succeeds. But at any point, somebody might take that ball and go. Steal it away. And that's what the team needs in the moment. So yeah. it's not, you know, sometimes it's very clear this person's in the lead. Sometimes it's very clear no one's in the lead. <laughs> right. And we're just... <laughs> Flowing. Just 
Yeah. Just flow. Yeah. So we play a little game on okay. this show, which is explain that gram, okay. which is typically we have the guest, and we have a couple of photos, and we have them explain the photo. But oh, fun. in this situation, so these are photos from Deb's um, Instagram. But oh. I think it would be fun in this impro improv um, nature here that we have Rob. And I explain them? Explain them. Oh my gosh. All right, that right there is Debbie with her first husband. <laughs> that is so this true. This is Debbie and her oh first gosh. husband. This is as things were falling apart. The this relationship was, the abuse, was going down. The abuse part, it was <laughs> yeah, very painful. Yeah, it was really bad. He's real a brute. Yeah, yeah, well, what, a, what a looker. Yeah. yeah. What a looker. What a looker. <laughs> so this, this looks like it was taken here locally. I mean, it's funny because I know where this is. I, I do too. Uh, this, the Western Western Wear Outlet. Uh, Western Wear Outlet is, this is actually before Debbie and the husband grew up. Um, this was a little thing, a little private thing. Oh, here we go. He liked her to put on some, some stir, stirrups. And, and some chaps. chaps. It was chaps, and Rob. Chaps. And, you know, he, that's a little bit of Western Wear going on. Well, then that can only make this even oh, more special. You should know where Makes that is, too. children and adults <laughs> as fat as pigs. Yes, um, this one right here, it's a sad story, but they were, they actually oh. had a baby. And uh, this is the sonogram. This is yeah. the sonogram photo of the baby. It's really wow. detailed. That was the baby. That was I'm, the, I'm a human portion. Inside Debbie's <laughs> tummy. What else we got? That's, That's it. it. <laughs> That's it. There we go. A retrospective. Boy, you really found the ones, didn't you? Debbie's dating life. Debbie's marriage life. We, we life. do a deep dive. We, yeah. we go looking for the best. Too job. much. Too much I information. Love it. <laughs> so one last little challenge yeah. for you, since oh you gosh. are so quick on your feet, is I'd love to throw a little tiny tidbit your way and oh. see what you can throw back at me. Okay. With a song? A we'll do it acapella, yes, sure, why not? Yes, yeah. we can do it. So let's pretend that one of you just saw your show here in Kansas City, and then the other one you're trying to convince to come see it. So, so okay, so you just saw about a minute, and then okay. you're trying to convince me to go? Is yeah. that that's what yeah. you're saying? Okay, you great. Okay. And then to sing a song. And we're gonna sing a song. Okay, you've gotta come. I'm, I'm busy. It's so good. I know, but I'm busy every night. You're gonna laugh. I'm busy Tuesday through Saturday at 7.30, and Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m. What will it take to make you come to the show? Tell you what, I just can't come. The answer is no. What's the reason you won't show? I wish that I could tell you, though I can't, so please don't make me come to the show. The show. Why? Tell me why I should come. Is it really just something amazing to see? I will tell you this one thing it's all. So fun. Best of all in the show is you and me. Is you and me. I'll go to the show. I'll go to the show. And it'll be crazy fun, amazing, and so I'll, I'll come to, to the show. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing, and uh, what a perfect note to end on. Yes. Come to the Quite show! Show! <laughs> <laughs> That's really why they broke up. That's why no more Mr. Monkey. <laughs> well, obviously you cannot miss this magical show. Don't miss um, it. So come to Starlight Indoors this week uh, to see Broadway's next hit musical. Yes. yes! February 27th through March 4th. Get your tickets at kcstarlight.com. Come see us. Yes, come see us.